What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another DE Hammer video. Today, we're talking Aura Mask. And I'm gonna go over the steps I use to get Aura Mask to work. I've seen some people say it's crumpling up, it's just not sticking, it's not working for them. Well, I'm gonna walk through my process for you. The only thing we're not gonna to touch on is dry times, as that can be affected by humidity or temperature. Read your um, shellac or your paint and see what its recommended dry times are and try to follow those. You'll know when it's dry uh, to the touch, but sometimes you won't know if it's completely dry. I know we're not getting into an art lesson today, but here is one of the pieces, the other one my brother has, and it has LED lights. Um, this video has been a while in the making to get to go on vacation, then allergies hit and Kind of took a break, but we're back. We're going to be having fun. Uh, remember, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe and bell button. Keep up with all the latest DE Hammer videos. But let's not delay any longer. Let's get into this video. To get started, we are going to sand. I'm using a Baltic birch. And right now, I going to use three different grits of sandpaper. We're going to start with 180, then go to 220, and then go to 320. And we're going to do the front and the back. That way we can pick which side we want our front to be or back. Uh, just kind of look and pick out what's going to be best for our project. In my case, it doesn't matter as much because painting the front. So talk about painting. Before we paint, we want to make sure we get all the dust off, get everything cleaned and wiped down. And I'm going to use a brush on shellac. You could use a spray on, you can see it right there. But uh, larger projects, I prefer to use the brush on. Smaller projects, I'll use the spray on. The main thing with these coats is that they're light and thin. And then you give them enough time to dry in between each coat. Can says an hour. I've sometimes got away with 30 minutes, but you'll know by the touch of it whether it's dry or not. And you can put that next coat on. And remember, in between each coat, really get all the dust particles off and really clean it up. The one of the reasons that you would use a sealer or a shellac like this is to prevent paint bleeding in to the wood. It's not a big issue in what I'm doing because we're going to be using two colors and there's going to be no wood exposed. But that's what that shellac layer is good for, is preventing the paint on top of it bleeding down into the wood below. One of the other benefits of using a shellac or a base coat of paint on your project is that it's going to help with the adhesion of the aura mask itself. Now we're going to do a light coat of paint. And you could do spray paint, you can do acrylic, whatever. This is just some old uh, white uh, acrylic paint I had. And I just do a light layer. Now, I should have gone from the bottom of the top of the board in that direction on that second coat. But I didn't, but I did it on the third coat. And this is just making sure we get a good coverage of everything on the board. And then we're just going to lightly sand it down. And again, remember, do small, light, coats it's going to dry faster you do really thick globby ones it's going to take forever now that it's dry and before we put it on we're going to do another quick light sanding i'm using 320 like i do in between all of my painting uh, just again really light soft and then making sure to get all the dust and anything off of it so it's clean to the touch so we can put the aura mask down and I'll do the hand test. Um, just drag my hand across it. Am I seeing anything on my hand? If yes, keep cleaning. Keep just working to get as much and everything you can off of there. But for the aura mask, I like to lay mine out, just see how far across it goes and then cut. And make sure you cut all of the pieces you're gonna need at one time just so you can look and measure, make sure everything's gonna, your whole board's gonna be covered. 
Then uh, you can see I'm using the glue as a weight. I got a roller there, but I'm going to use a scale and just allow that ore mass to get on there and just take it little by little. I know it seems like I'm going really fast, but remember, this is sped up. And I normally, a lot of times, I'll use the scale to get me going, and then I'll switch off and start using my thumb and just pressing in there, making sure there's no air pockets in there, and then just working down and getting it uh, to cover the board. It's really not that hard of a process. It just takes uh, patience. Uh, you can see there, I'm just taking my roller, really just making sure it's attached, making sure there's no air pockets or bubbles in there. As you saw, I was using an architectural scale to get mine going. You don't have to use that. You can use anything that's flat, long, but is going to cover the majority of your width to get that ore mask on. And now, as you can see here again, just going with the scale, using it. We got a little bit of overlap between the two pieces. That's okay. As you can see, it's... I came in at an angle there, so it left a gap in that lower left-hand corner. And instead of trying to take everything off and rework it and get it all perfectly straight, we'll just go cut some up some scrap pieces and cover that area. Again, just using my thumb, make sure it's got a good contact. Now, if you ever have issues with your uh, ore mask peeling off, you can always clamp them down together and leave them for a couple hours, and that may help uh, get a better adhesion. Remeasure all your corners. Remember, you just added shellac, paint, and ore masks, so your thickness is gonna be a little bit different than if you had just measured it at the start. Now, getting it on the CNC, I first started with a 45 degree bit, and if you can see some, what looks like bubbling around the cuts, with the 45 degree bit, Doing this cut, I notice it does push the material up as well as the ore mass coming up and forming almost like little volcanoes. Also, I didn't get 100% of the material out of all the holes, but overall, uh, it did work. It was fine. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, peeling off the ore mass once it's done. But with the 45 degree B bit, there was some things you can see me going in every once in a while in here, just trying to clean out some of the holes a little bit. But it was what it was, and I was like, you know what? We'll also do this with a 90 degree bit. So on the 45 degree B bit one, it, we're cutting it out. I used a three flute uh, upcut bit, and you can see got a lot of tear out going on the you can see the ore mask coming up over on the up the sides facing up. So this is where I decided on the next one. Uh, I'd already decided I was going to try it with a 90 degree bit, but I was going to put my down cut bit to use and see if that left me with a better edge because this one did take some time on the cleanup. I had to bust out the Dremel and everything, but you will see that part later. The, this is the 90 degree V bit cut and with the down cut bit and you can see the edges are nice and clean on the front. So totally going to start trying to use the down cut bit more and more. I've just had some bad experiences with it. Not sure what was different in this one and why I was getting good results and it didn't go haywire someplace else. Maybe I finally got the settings down, not doing too deep of a, cut a lot shallower than I would with the upcut bit. All right, now this is the one with, this is the 45 degree and upcut bit and cleaning it. You can see you got my Dremel out, just having to go around all the sides, try to get any tear out or uh, fuzzies hanging there. And it was a lot of work cleaning it up. Whereas with the down cut bit, did not have those issues. I had other issues. And also here, yes, I took some sandpaper and lightly just uh, sanded it down. Um, tried to get some of the loose bits out. And then also now, also on both of the 45 and 90 degree, just came in, 
put a layer of shellac, sanded it down. Now just putting a base coat on the 45 degree one, I went with black on the back. And I'm gonna have to say, preferred that better, but did not record it as this one was what I was recording. For the standoffs, I used approximately a 12 millimeter diameter dowel and then cut those into 24-ish millimeter lengths. Then I hollowed out just a little bit of the center. So if I didn't feel the glue was holding them in there well enough, I could always just uh, go and screw them in to give them a little bit extra strength. Then once standoffs were in, come back, spray paint them up white, and then let that dry. And then I'm just coming in and blowing everything out, making sure there's no debris or sand in any of those holes. Then taping up the sides because we're about to spray paint the front. And just using painter's tape to tape all that off. Make sure I can get in at all the different angles and then just spray paint it black. Want to make sure you get in there and get in deep in all those holes. And then time to peel it all off. Now the 45 degree, as you can see, just really kind of just peels away very easily, but it also peeled away some of the paint. And I'm not quite sure why that happened on this one, but not on the 90 degree. Fixing that was simple, brushed over it lightly, uh, kind of do like a dry brush technique if you have this issue to fix those problems. However, on the 90 degree one, getting this off was a pain. With the 45 degree, I told you, kind of cut up and made a volcano with uh, every little hole. On this one, it pushed, felt like it pushed it down inside there. Actually, didn't have any issues with white paint peeling, but lots of issues just trying to get the oral mask off. So I had to sit there and rub with my thumb and just rub it and rub and rub until it was all off. Didn't hurt any of the paint, but came out really good. Just so instead of having the cleanup time from the upcut bit, now I had the cleanup time of removing the oral mask on this. So way around this, I can see is just spacing out the holes more on the cut because the areas that had more spacing between the holes than the areas that were really compact came off actually pretty easily. It was just those compact areas that gave me trouble. And Figured why not add some LEDs? So just soldering up uh, my connector to an LED, old LED strip I had, making sure everything's nice and lined up, got my solder, and just soldering those wires onto the LED strip. And remember, whenever you solder, test and make sure it works. And this is the 90 degree uh, down cut bit piece that I'm adding the LED lights to. Again, test before you put on. And a lot, I'm just basically using friction and a little bit of tape to hold all this together. I did just tape up the connectors with some electrical tape. You know, just make sure nothing shorts out there. And uh, compared to the other one, I did add a few more standoffs to hold the LEDs in place. So I could have that drop down for the uh, power cable to run down and not get caught up by there. Don't use that glue. Uh, <laughs> the Krilla glue, it's not meant for that. I was playing around. I don't know what, but that double-sided tape worked best and kept everything where I wanted it. Again, with the friction and everything was good. If you want to use some glue, probably get some hot glue and try that. And there you have it. That's the process I use when I'm using Aura Mask. Main thing, it is a time consuming process. Is it hard? No, just time consuming. Uh, watching paint dry is fun. Uh, the other thing is just taking your time while you're doing this. Don't rush it. Just let things happen. Give it time to the paint to fully dry before you get it on there. Read your can labels, see what their recommended dry time is. Note how humid it is or how hot or cold it is, and then make note of that as well. So you can see, hey, in this temperature, I need to let it dry for a little bit longer, or I can get it done faster. The, uh, humidity and temperature are going to play a big part in that. But overall, easy process, great results. Cleanup, yes, you're, you're going to have cleanup, but with the right bits, you can prevent that. 
with the right settings, you can prevent that. But thank you everyone for watching. Again, remember, if you aren't a subscriber, hit that subscribe and bell button to keep up with all the latest videos. And until next time, keep making stuff.